Joel chapter 2. Um, while y'all turn in there, I'm going to want to say thank you again for the opportunity to preach. Thank you for letting me, letting me be here. Um, I want to say thank you for letting me be here also. Um, but we're going to be in Joel chapter 2. Um, Joel chapter 2. We're going to read verses 21 through 30. Or 21 through 20, uh, 28, and then we're going to read 32. And it says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth uh, her fruit, the fig tree and the, and the vine do yield their strength. Be, gl- be glad when ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given, for ye have given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the full, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the uh, palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall. Eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your, your God and hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all, my, all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy prophecy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and then 32 it says and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call in the name of the lord shall be delivered for in the mount zion and in israel shall be deliverance as the lord has said in raiment whom the lord shall call what we're going to be talking about um a merciful god that's what that's my title tonight a merciful god and these um these prophets sent by God, Elijah and Elisha, um, have has given these uh, three things to the Israelites. Uh, he, he's given a warning, a choice, and a promise. To, he, he gave it. He uh, got it from God to give to the people, and God told the prophets to give these three things because there were sin inside the camp, and they were making it hard for people to live inside the camp, and, and making things hard for them, and and that's why God was punishing them. And number one, we're, we're going to see, we're see the warning. Uh, we see the warning. It said the, uh, God sent these, these uh, prophets to give them a warning. Uh, and that's, the warning is uh, it's a consequence uh, for sin is punishment. And sometimes we have warnings in our life, right. but most of the time right. we ignore it. Most of the time uh, we ignore it and just say, oh, that's right. nothing. That's nothing for us. And w- when we ignore it, then we get punished. It's just like, I guess, the old... Uh, illustration is when your mom gives you a warning and say stay out of the cookie jar and then your big sister comes along and finds your hand in the cookie jar and she warns you about what mom said and and it's and you're going to get a spanking probably later and it's saying right here that god has given them a warning um and god has given the the prophets a warning for the people and the, the prophets are saying to the people, saying, hey, you have sin in your camp, and you need to fix this. And um, though God punishes, he also wants people to repent and be saved for the, right. of their Amen. sins. Uh, though, though God punishes us, though, though our mom punishes us, um, she still loves us. Right. Though God punishes us, he still loves us. Amen. And he still wants us to repent and, forget, and, and, and ask for forgiveness. In 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. It's saying there that God is long-suffering. Right. He, he loves us. He wants us to do what's right. Yes. But first, we have to uh, come to repentance. If we don't come to repentance, then we, we will perish. But he right. doesn't want us to perish. Right. The people in Judah were sinning nonstop in the, in the camp. And that's why God punished them by sending the locusts. Uh, you see in um, uh, uh, verse 25, and it says, "And I was." Uh, you see, actually, you see. Uh, you got to find it. Sorry. 25. It says, "And I will restore to you the years of the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar, and the plat and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent unto you." It's saying there that 
He's going to send all those things if you don't get it right. right. He, he's going to send them. That's his army to send to you because you're not doing what's right. You're sinning inside the camp. Also, Joel warned uh, the sinners that a far, day, uh, far worse day was coming. Uh, though, though you have these little problems in your life, though you have just these little locuses or, or drought in your life, then there's going to be a far, more, uh, far worse day coming, and that's the judgment seat. That's when you go to heaven and you get judged by God. And that's going to seem like just a little gnat to you. That's going to seem like a little gnat to, to your punishment. Right. Number two, the choice. In Bible times, when they, when they wanted to repent or ask for forgiveness... They, they are of their sins. They, they tore uh, their clothes, their, they tore their garments to pieces, and they, they, wear, they wore asses, uh, just saying how filthy I am and uh, I'm, a filthy, I'm a filthy rag. Today we do not do that. Today we, uh, today we tear our hearts, we, we rip our hearts because, uh, well, we, we rip our hearts, and, and it means to tear up your sins. It means to cast away. It means to cast uh, as far as possible. Um, God comes to you and says, uh, when, you, when, you give, when you ask for forgiveness, he comes to you and says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast it far, far as, as, you, as I can. He's going to cast it far into the sea. But the devil comes along and sometimes saying, hey, do you remember this sin? Do, do you remember that sin? And he tries to torture you by it. He tries to tear you down and saying, hey, you're not worthy. Right. You're not worthy of this. Right. Right. But God comes along and saying, hey, I will, I'm casting this if you just, if you just forgive me. If you just make that choice and repent on me, but we make this choice, we but, but we make the choice to do this. We, we make it, not not our mommy, not our daddy, not our siblings. It, 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 you might say, "Oh, my dad's a pastor." Okay, that's good. That's that's good. Your dad's a pastor. Uh, you could say, "My mom's a saved," and, and that's good. But it's not their choice. It's it's not their choice. It's your choice. That they had to make a choice. Uh, and their grandma had to make a choice. Um, I have a, uh, the story is um, my grandma. She uh, she wasn't she she didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, she uh, I think I believe her her dad was a drunk. Um, but one day um, God sent somebody to come knock on her door, and she and gave her the warning, just like I said in the first point. Gave her a warning, and then she kept coming and, and she kept coming and uh, and trying to get her to come. And what my grandma did is she made the choice. She made the choice to accept right. Christ. Right. And if she didn't, then I don't know. I probably wouldn't even be here. Right. Right. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Um, number three, the promise. Joel also described the promise of God's mercy to his people. God's promise is to restore all the crops, he, to restore all, all, the things, the, the, uh, all the things that the fire burnt. Yeah. Yeah. And God, God is coming to us and saying, hey, I have a promise. If you just, if you just heed the warning, if you just choose, if you ch uh, ch choose, chose me, uh, I, you will see these promises. Um, it, and uh, God promises to pour out His Spirit on His people. Yeah. It says in uh, yeah. verse twenty-eight, it says, "And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out My Spirit upon all flesh." It's saying right there, He will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. He's saying there that we can. Uh, if we uh, heed the warning, if we if we uh, choose the right, then he will he he will pour all of his blessings on us. He'll pour his Holy Spirit on us, and, and the, also the other promise is he he gives us a choice to call on him. In Rome, in Joel two thirty two it says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Also, and it says Romans ten thirteen, for whosoever shall call upon the name right. of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. If you just call on his name, you will be saved. Right. Right. God is going to punish all the people that did not call on his name. Um, yep. The people that do not get saved, they're, they're going to get punished one day. And Joel ended the warnings with God's promise to restore the land of the Israelites, and they turned around and repented to God. That's what we need to do. We need to, uh, we, we need to heed the warning. We need to make that choice, and we need to see that uh, when we make the choice, we, we see these promises that God has given us. Uh, we need to heed the warning. The, cho uh, the choice, he loved us so much to come to the earth to die for our sins. Amen. He did that because he did not want us to uh, uh, die and go to, he right. to hell. Do you continue to, to, to sin and reject God? 
uh, and pay the punishment of your own sin? Or do you choose to repent of your, own, of your sin and accept him as your personal Savior? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for all things you've done. And Lord, just help us today, Lord. Just help us to uh, uh, make the, uh, just heed the warning and get that choice uh, settled tonight, Lord, if it's not settled. Lord, just help us to see the promises you have given us, Lord. Just help us to see the promises in, in our Christian walk, Lord. Please just help us to uh, just keep going for you, Lord. Just help us to keep uh, obeying you, and Lord, just help us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go on and sit down there. That'll be good. We're going to take out our Bibles tonight. We're going to be in Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3. And I'm not going to speak long, uh, but uh, if I knew we were going to have the other message too. But at the same time, I want to give you some thoughts from this good old book. Amen. And we ought to love the Bible. Praise God. Amen. All right. Well, Ruth chapter 3. And I'm going to ask if you would please to stand for the reading of the Word of God here tonight. Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3. And uh, we will look into the perfect law of liberty. Amen. All right. Ruth chapter 3. We're going to start reading in verse number 1. And uh, the Bible says that then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? that it may be well with thee. And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast. Behold, he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man, until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou hast said, or all that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And she went down under the floor and did according to all that her mother in law bade her. And all God's people said, Amen, Lord, help us tonight. I thank you, God, for even the message that we've already heard tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Chase and him being here. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship that we had at the beginning of the service. Thank you for the specials, that have, uh, the, the songs that have been sung. And I pray, God, that you would bless your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated. And uh, as you <clears throat> uh, look into the scriptures, we're reminded of what we talked about last week. Last week we talked about how you know, this all has to do with the wonderful instruction that uh, Naomi was giving to Ruth. She knew the manner of, does anybody, did anybody get these written down last week? <laughs> Number one, she knew the manner of family. She knew all about her roots. She knew about her relations. And she knew all about his resources. By the way, I don't know if, it, uh, if you ever knew about that. But uh, uh, you remember maybe talking to someone uh, in your house. Well, they're rich. Somehow everybody in family knows the, who the rich uncle is, don't they? They know who the rich family members are. Well, she knew all about him. Uh, the second thing, she knew the manner of finding. She knew that he would desire something pure. She knew that he would desire something perfumed. She knew that he would desire something pretty. But now here in verse number 4, we know she knew the manner of fellowship. Look again at verse number 4. Let's read it again. It says here, And it shall be when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. She said, Let me tell you how to connect with this guy. 
And what was her instruction? Watch the man. Can I tell you, friend, if you're going to grow as a Christian, if you're going to enjoy this relationship after coming in from being in a cursed land, don't you want to know how you're going to connect to him? And if you're going to connect to him, you better keep your eyes on him. You better keep your focus on him. And you better know that everything you ever need in your life is going to come from him. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame friend let's quit looking quit looking at everything else that's going on in this world let's quit looking at everything that's going on in this church let's quit looking at what's going on in politics and let's start casting our eyes up to heaven and keeping our eyes on Jesus he is the source of everything that's good, good that's going to happen to us anyway. You know, even in the days uh, that uh, in the end, the Bible says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Hey, friend, let me tell you, hey, this is going to be after a celebration. This right here, even in verse number 4, she said, Mark, where he's going to lie down. I got a question, what's that after? That's after all of the work's been done. Somebody say amen man. That's after all the grain's been brought in. That's when we're getting ready to celebrate. And you need to know that in this end time, hey, once this thing's all over, you need to know we need to keep our eyes on Him. There's a celebration that's coming. Hey, all the hard work, hey, all of that's right now. All the hard days, all the heat of the day, that's what you're enduring at this very moment. But there's going to come a time when this world is going to be over and your time on this world is going to be over and you need to know that it will be nothing but glory and joy and celebration for eternity. Woo. Not only did she tell him to watch the man, it's what he said. she said there in verse number 4, it shall be when he lie down thou shalt mark the place. How about this? You need to worship the man. It says here, Thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down. By the way, let me just tell you this. <laughs> you ought to learn to go in and uncover his feet. You know, Boaz, uh, they say that uh, back in this time, the, the, the master that he would probably, he probably would have slept under, uh, uh, on a mat or some kind of a skin. And, uh, but uh, in this somehow, none, none of this is by accident. I, wa I want you to get these pictures here because he would be laying right there. Um, matter of fact, he's lay, he had been doing all this hard work. They've been winnowing. They've been threshing. They've been bringing in all the seed. And you need to know that's where he was going to spend his night. He loves uh, dwelling amongst the thing that he's been trying to work in. He loves all the fruit of his field. He loves uh, bringing in all the produce. He loves all of the increase. He loves to spend his time with that. And here he is is laying down in that time of slumber, uh, that time when, hey, don't you know, isn't that going to be a good day when we'll be able to lay our armor down, we'll be able to lay down our, our shield and lay down our sword, never have to pick them up again. That'll be a wondrous day, but there he is finally at rest. And what does she do? She comes in. I want you to get this picture. She come in and she would uncover his feet. And she would lay down. I want you to get the picture now. She'd lay down crossways at his feet. 
By the way, I don't know about you, but isn't that the beautiful place where you find rest? Isn't that the place where you can find peace? Isn't that the place that you can enjoy that fellowship? Isn't that the place where you ought to be coming down and you ought to be uncovering his feet just like a little servant girl? You ought to come unto him. Those eastern servants, they would frequently come in and they would sleep in the chamber or the tent where their master would uh, was resting and if they wanted that covering they had every right and I want you to get this the custom allowed them to come and to benefit from the part of the covering that was on their master's bed somebody help me I don't care it doesn't matter uh, friend you can run in here tonight if God gets on you but I'm just telling you that everything that is on him is entitled to you so Somebody say amen. Friend, I, I have every right to walk in there. I have every right to request it. I have every right to take it unto myself. Why? He's my kinsman redeemer. And now that he's my kinsman redeemer, I can come in and everything that's his, I have a right to. Now the question, what, was she, what could she be covered by? First thing, she could be covered by his gory work. That picture of Calvary right there. The Bible says in Psalm 32, 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. Can I just tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm saved by the blood of God. I'm saved by the life of God. I'm saved by the redeeming power of God. I'm saved by the justifi justification of God. I'm saved uh, by the forgiveness of God. I'm saved whatever it is. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm glad to report to you that you can be saved saved there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins aren't you glad that it was filled with blood aren't you glad that there's enough forgiveness to go around aren't you glad that there's plenty to be had oh yes friend I was covered she could be covered by that gory work pictured there of Calvary how about this she was also covered by his glory work the Bible says this, now listen, his glory work, what is this? Matthew 10, 26, fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. But I also want you to know, though, that here she was, and she was covered. What was she covered by? She was covered by the very thing that had covered him. And you need to know that when you ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, you are taking his covering unto yourself. And now when God looks at you, he does not see you. He sees his own son. And you need to know that now all God sees, hey, the same covering that was on him now rests upon them and all I can see is my son glory oh what joy and what hope we can have in the glory work of Jesus Christ Amen. This is a Holy Ghost work. You see, this has to do, uh, th this idea of being poured out. God, uh, isn't it a blessing, though, that God can pour out upon us here and now? We were looking at these verses today, John 7, 38 and 39. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. We're reminded of his grand work here. Hey, it says there, look at that again in verse 4. And it shall be when he lie it down that thou shalt mark the place. Doesn't that sound exactly like what the angels told them when they came to see that empty tomb that one day? They said, he is not here for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Why don't you look? Why don't you get a long look? Why don't you mark it well? Why don't you memorize it in your
your mind. Mark the place where he lay. But friend, you need to know that his stay there, it was just a short little time. For he would rise up again with healing in his wings to do what? To draw his bride unto himself. Oh, yes, friend. How about this? Not only are we reminded of his grand work, we're reminded of his gospel work. Look at that in verse number 4. It shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet. Woo! <laughs> Romans 10, 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Friend, I just want you to know how precious are the feet of Jesus. There was no more, uh, no more pair uh, on this earth that was more beautiful than that of Jesus Christ. Even John the Baptist said that I'm not worthy to carry his shoes. I'm not worthy to bear. I'm not worthy to latch the shoe, latch it on one of his feet. There is no one that has the kind of feet like our Savior has. Here she is, and she walked in, and she uncovered his feet. I can only imagine what that might have been like. Oh, my goodness, there they are. Oh, my goodness, there's those gospel-preaching feet. There's those feet that are going to walk to me one day. There's those feet that came to me when I could not come to him. There's those feet right there. Praise God. I got a question as a matter of fact. Do you remember about Mary and Martha? Where would you going to find Mary? She was at the feet of Jesus. I got a question. Where are you tonight? Do you love being at the feet of Jesus? Do you love dwelling with him? Matter of fact, look again at verse 4. It shall be when he lie down, thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet. Listen, and lay thee down. Why don't you get next to those feet? Why don't you get close to him? I'm reminded of the other lady, Mary, that the Bible says as Jesus sat at meat with Simon one night that she came in and she was weeping over her own sin and she was begging God for mercy and she was crying tears and the Bible says that even with the hairs of her head that she would wipe his feet with, she would wash his feet with her tears and she would wipe his feet with the hairs from off of her head there's a difference here though she was laid down Before you come into God's presence, you're going to have to learn how to go down. Quit acting like you're going to be lifted up. Why don't you humble yourselves in the sight of God? He shall lift you up. But if you're going to get anything, you're going to be in the presence of God. You're going to learn how to go down, down, down. Matter of fact, I'm just going to be honest with you. If you're going to, if you're going to do something wrong, you're going to go down. If you're going to do something right, you're going to have to go down. If you're going to do something wrong, why don't you read the book of Jonah, and you're going to find out, what, seven times where it says that he went down, he went down, he went down. And where did he end up? At the bottom of the prison bars of the ocean floor. But I'm going to tell you, if you look further here, if you're going to do something right, why don't you learn how to go down? And why don't you learn how to go down on your own? And why don't you learn how to humble yourself in the presence of Almighty God? And why don't you learn how to bow in respect? And why don't you learn how to offer Him uh, the true honor and the true glory that is only due unto Him? You see, before she could be exalted as a bride, she would have to go down. As a handmaid. Too many times we're trying to demand things for ourselves. And I'm here to tell you, friend, you have to learn how to bow before him. But what else happens here and we'll be done here tonight? Two more things about this. She, ha she tells him here in verse number four, look at it again. It shall be. When he lieth down, thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. 
Here's another part, and boy, this one sure does go against our crawl. You ready? You have to wait on the man. Mm -hmm. So far, we've learned <laughs> that uh, you're going to have to. We're uh, you're going to have to watch the man. You're going to have to worship the man. You're going to have to. Uh, what was it? Uh, now, now it's a wait on the man. You say, well, what is she going to have to wait on? I said, he'll tell you what you need to do. Let me say it like this. No matter what you do, no matter no no amount of prodding is going to make him speak until he's ready to. Matter of fact, boy, I'm getting excited, getting ahead of myself. But uh, he didn't wake up right away. He didn't speak right away. As a matter of fact, I am getting ahead of myself here. But look, if you would, uh, verse number. Where are we at? Uh, verse number eight. And it came to pass at what? Midnight. And I'm going to tell you, friend, in the darkest of your hours. <laughs> Woo! In the darkest of your hours. In the time when the fear. In the time where you're saying, I knew I shouldn't have come in here. What's up with Naomi telling me to do this kind of stuff? In the darkest of your questions. In the darkest of your concerns. In the darkest of your wonders as to whether or not you'll even be accepted. At the midnight hour is the time that he'll wake and stir himself and speak words of peace. But friend, you're going to have to learn to wait on him. That's going to go against your crawl. It's going to go against your desires. It's going to go against your understanding. It's going to go against learn how to wait on the Lord. Psalm 62, 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. How about this? Look at verse number 5. And she said unto her, all that thou sayest unto me I will do. And she went down under the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. By the way, I got a question. How much rest do you think she got that night? How much? I'll be honest with you. I, was one, I, I sort of wonder if she might not, if there might not have been a little bit of fear there, Brother Gary. You want to know why? What do, I got a question. Why was he out there? He'd been working. So had been everybody else. Okay. Basking in the prophets. There's no one more reason. I want you to think with me. One more reason why the owner was out there. Ah, he's protecting his stuff. How are you going to, what, what do you think, what's going to be, that? Uh, have you ever been half scared out of your mind only to say, my goodness, somebody touched you and you're ready to fight? It's like, in the midnight hour, somebody attacks you. I want you to get this. She didn't know what his reaction was going to be. Find a stranger in there. That's part of his duties was to protect his stuff. She didn't know how he was going to react. A little bit of fear. I'll promise you. <laughs> she didn't sleep a wink. Now, it, it doesn't say in there. I'm just telling you she didn't sleep a wink. I wouldn't have. How about you? I'd have stayed. I'd have been there the whole night praying. Oh, God, help. help him. First of all, help him not to kill me. Second of all, Help him to find me pleasurable. Help him to find me that, that he'd be interested. Help him to cast some of his mercy on me. Uh, uh, that he might be interested my way. I have to learn how to wait on him. But then you're going to have to work for, for him. What all, what all was required? Not much. Go in there, lay down, and wait. 
Go in there. Lay down and wait. Go in there. Lay down. Worship Him. Love Him. Adore Him. Magnify Him. Wait on Him. Can I tell you, by the way, that's one of the greatest things that God wants out of you is just to be with you. Do you understand that? We, we, we get in this idea, well, I have to work so I can earn his grace. That'll never happen. You'll never earn his grace. By the way, can, can I just go ahead and say this? You'll never earn his grace. Even if you are saved, you don't earn grace. Grace is grace. Works are works. But learn how to just enjoy being with him. Matter of fact, here's one of the things, though, that there's a verse that came across my mind. And we're almost done here. But turn with me to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Matthew chapter 21. I love those verses that we just read in verses 5 and 6. She looked at Naomi. She said, what you've asked me to do, I'll do. Verse 6, she went and did all that Naomi asked her to do. Look at these verses here in verse number 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him the first. Jesus saith unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Friend, I'm telling you, I hope you're getting some of this tonight. If God tells you to something to do something, you better do it, and you better do it with all of your heart. But whatever it is, don't you get caught lying to him. Don't say, I'm going to go and don't go. If anything, hey, why? Why don't you get right? Why don't you get humble? Why don't you get with God and say, God, I give my heart to you. Forgive me of my rebellion. And Lord, have your way. Oh, we need people that when God calls, they're going to respond in the affirmative and give their life to glorifying God with their decisions. Let's not get caught the other way. Where we say, a lot of people talk a good game, but all they are is just a bunch of flap noodles. Come on now, is everybody all right? That's all they are. They just yak, 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 talking a good spiritual game. But they're no different than the man said, oh, yes, Lord, I love you. I'm going to go do that and never go. Never go. Never want to serve the Lord. Never do anything outside of their comfort zone. They only have a a little space. Lord, I'll serve you as long as it falls within these parameters. Why don't you just do what God wants you to do? Because God has great plans for you. And what glory will come as we obey the Lord? Let's pray tonight. That's all we're going to look at this evening. Won't you obey the Lord? As a matter of fact, if I can remind you, the last two weeks on Wednesday nights, we have had special prayer for youth and children. Last two weeks, we've prayed special prayers, and God's given us some salvations. The invitation tonight is twofold. I want us to pray. If God spoke to your heart about something here, I want you to pray about. But the other thing I want you to pray for, and let's all pray if we can. Let's pray that God would let us see some more young people. Trust. I don't, honestly, I don't mind what age they are. But I do believe that God has a tender spot, a tender spot for young people. And we've seen God do some great things. We've seen God save some young souls. And so I invite you, if you would, to come down here and let's pray. Let's lift this up and see if God would send some more 
not because we're good people, not because we're a good church. Let's see if God would do something. Let's find the 